I'm Christian Abbott. I'm Nathan Lavender. I'm Sean Abbott. And this is the Red Mist Podcast. Hello, welcome to the Red Mist Podcast, Season 3, Episode 42, the 1972 Dodge Charger, caught no one's racing, driven by country music star Marty Robbins. What do you think of that, Nate? That's really good. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's really, that's really like good. <laughs> Sherman set the Wayback Machine for 1972, when we had real, real muscle cars, real cars. Yeah, right. Real cars and uh, real cars. Not Carl Larson, not Kyle yeah. Petty. Who who was in the forty two? Kyle know. Petty. I think it was, yeah, it was okay. It was Kyle Petty. I thought I had Kyle I Petty. This fire there. Yeah, that's all right. Jeez, Nate. Even I knew that. No, I I knew that. I, Isn't I, that I, cool? That was the first guess. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna go with the Plymouth Superbird, but we already did that this year. So with the number four, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, but it's just yeah, Pete yeah, Hamilton. Already, yes, I already I did know. that. I have good NASCAR yeah. history. I know, I know. Try me, try me. But I love it. Yeah. Nineteen seventy-two Dodge Charger, like that was like fast, bad fast, bad fast. It was not a uh, spec car either. Uh, no, it, it wasn't no. anything to talk about it. Either. No, and this is like back in the day when we didn't have pit lane speed limits and stuff yeah. like that and stage right. racing. What are those? Uh, yeah. With men and men. <laughs> and a self will rise again. Wow. Wow. All right. On tonight's episode, we'll discuss NASCAR in Sin City. Oh, sorry. Not Sin City. Sin City East. <laughs> Was Pitbull there? <laughs> oh, good one. Was Pitbull there? Yeah. Mr. 305 Was there, right? I saw him. Was he? 305. 305. Yeah, 305, right? Just yeah. the worldwide. Was he there supporting track house? He was walking with them in a post. So Was he? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, we'll yeah. Talk Ross, to NASCAR. Ross and Daniel. So. We had a barn burner of finish there. I mean, and, uh, sure. That was, that was, huh? Sure. It was a barn burner. I, I have my thoughts. I have my thoughts. Oh, wow. All right. Um. We, and we will talk the Mexican Grand Prix. That was a good race. Controversy. Oh, I tried. I tried. <laughs> I tried. Uh, then we will uh, discuss our race of the weekend. That we feel was the race of the weekend. Mm-hmm. I think it was. Yeah. Which was... The Virginia is for Racing Lovers 300. Mazda MX-5 Cup Race at Martinsville. Yeah, so good. 105 laps on the bull ring. On the paperclip. It was In an MX-5. It was fantastic. MX-5s, I mean... That's about... Hop into it? No, let's... No. Uh, we'll come back to it. Let's 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 get to NASCAR. Okay. Okay. Um, Nate, welcome back. Yes, here uh, I am. Just, just in time. Oh my God. Yeah, for they, the championship. I see two, they can't. Oh, they can't. yeah. 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 So, and I, here, I think the, I think the guy that was leading the championship, you know, is it should be leading the championship is still hosed. But anyways, um, <clears throat> anyways, uh, we were at we were at Homestead. Now I this. Quick thought here. This should be the final track. This should, 100% should be the season. Okay. I have no idea why Phoenix, which is just dreck. It's terrible. It's, it's terrible. terrible. It's like, terrible. There's, there's no passing if there is passing. Right. You move the guy out of the way and 
that you know. But you go six wide. Why are you complaining? I don't want to hear that. No, and and they already ruined the dog leg as it is. There's no dog leg. <laughs> You go it's, six wide. What more can you ask for? Well, there's there's no tracks limits there either, <laughs> because they different, they run all over the place. So different, different anyway, story. Yeah, yeah, but it's just it's it's anyways. This is where it should be. This should, under the lights here. Yeah, no, hundred mm-hmm. percent. No, I, I, yeah. under under the lights. I mean, at first, like if I maybe look back at it, is, is it better flat or better banked? I'd say probably better banked, because. You have a better chance of. I just think there's grooves. no passing here. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, congrats to uh, Tyler Reddick. He's in. Yep. He went from flipping the week before to uh, qualifying for the <laughs> Phoenix race. <laughs> That's right. That's right. What a turnaround. Good for uh, 23XI Racing, Michael Jordan, and Denny Boo Hamlin, car owner. Although I think this team might be out of NASCAR next year, anyways. We'll see. I mean, he uh, well. I don't get me started with the whole charter thing. That he yeah, that's out. a discussion for the off season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. All right, Nate. Let's let's have your recap of the race. Well, I mean, it. My whole thing is NASCAR needs to go back here for the season finale. But this is a good track for drivers like Carl Larson, who I thought would rebound mm-hmm. and maybe do uh, exceptionally well. And and he and he was. Uh, he had two he terrible. He had two inc- well, he had an incident early in the race, and then uh, clawed his way back, and then uh, he ran afoul of one of my favorite drivers in NASCAR. Oh, eighty-three. <laughs> Austin Dillon, I bet, but Grampy, Austin, uh, Grampy Richards' son, grandson, uh, Kyle pap, Larson, pap, pap, said pap, pap, did nothing wrong. Grandson, yeah, I know, yeah, I know, but <laughs> but this was going to be a really good. I thought it was going to be a really good race because right away I would have guessed it would have been Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson, as we mentioned, uh, mm-hmm. Denny Hamlin, and Tyler Reddick. I think would be easy choices for battling for the win and all yep. four of which agree. are championship drivers looking to get a um you know get a win get a win uh go to the next round right and yep. fight for the championship uh and so we, we go and there was plenty of you know lead swaps and arguably really good racing because it wasn't just the high line this time but a lot of times you could make a run through the middle and make it work yeah. and and even fighting low which i mean i think the better uh, not, excuse me i think the racing was a lot better than in years past at homestead to begin with which even furthers the argument for why is this not the final the, fi- the final because in stage one there was you know, the uh 23 xi uh teammates were battling for the lead bubble wallace and uh tyler reddick Mm-hmm. They they were having a great battle for the lead, um, and was there? Did Kyle Larson get? He had a problem in stage one as well because he had the tire issue. Um, so I mean, I think it was a good thing that the uh, <laughs> stage caution came out because he was able to catch up and regroup and. Um, you know, soon be back in the fight. But he wasn't really all much of a factor in stage two. Uh, and in fact, it was more so the three picks I had mentioned, uh, Hamlin, Bell, and Reddick, and Blaney was starting to really uh, come up through the field along with Chase Elliott. Uh, again, those two are also drivers that need to come, uh, you know, get the victory or at least get points to move on. Because I wouldn't even pick Kyle Larson to have an issue because he came into the race 35 points to the good. Um, And then we found out in the final stage that Kyle Larson would have that issue uh, with going three wide in the middle. And I think he misread where Austin Dillon was going to go or thought 
Austin Dillon was going to let him go. But that didn't end up being the case. He he held his line, Austin Dillon did, on the high side. And I think Kyle Larson just miscalculated his move on him. Uh, which is a rare mistake for Kyle Larson. And he, and he admits to being at times a, over, a little too aggressive. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and, this, is, and this is, I mean, this is with I, about 10 laps to go. Yeah, it, it was getting to it. And it was just Ryan Blaney and Kyle Larson to mm-hmm. decide the win. Um, but I'd even also say, you know, what what is Ryan Blaney doing? He kind of went up and gave Kyle Larson not all that much room. There was plenty mm-hmm. of space on the bottom, which I you you could argue, well, why doesn't Ryan Blaney go down below? I mean, you kind of see the situation. There's a car on your outside yeah. and you had an incoming car even higher up. So I think Ryan Blaney was even inching him more than what he should have. Gotcha. Because, uh, I don't know. I, that's just my look at it. And then everyone comes down Pitt Road. And now it's Lee Diffie lives for, lives for this. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 And, <laughs> and then out of nowhere, here's Dennis. Dennis Hamlin fighting for the win. And my boy Christopher Bell, he's, he's in it. But not as much in the fight as you would think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's the three of them. And they take the white flag. And Tyler Reddick is third, mind you when this happens and he's able to make the pass on Dennis, Dennis Hamlin. Uh, and then I'm thinking, okay, Ryan Blaney's going to go on the high side just to get the run. Mm-hmm. He picks the middle, which I don't know if I'm in a last lap situation at Homestead, you're either way low to maybe take the air off the nose or you're on the high side to keep the momentum going when you leave the corner. Yeah. I don't know why he was in the middle. I that would have been the la- that would have been my last guess in going into three and four in the final lap at Homestead, especially with the NASCAR. And it just Tyler Reddick just breezed by him like he wasn't even worried about passing him. Or I don't I don't know what Ryan Blaney was doing. He he that was the easiest pass you'll ever get from Ryan Blaney or have, in fact, anybody. I, and Ryan Blaney didn't even fight for it. Like, I'm not saying put the guy in the wall, but I mean, he's, if he's going to pinch Kyle Larson, maybe pinch Tyler Reddick. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I just, it, 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 le- it left me puzzled. Um, but did you see the finish on uh, yeah, I thought it, I didn't. Uh, I I just thought he. I thought Reddick had a huge run and he blew by him. That's all. Kind he caught him like in between three and four. I mean, that's like the perfect spot. No, he he threw it in there in three and just I think. Well, that's what I'm saying. He caught him. He threw it in, but he when he made the pass, he was in between three and four. So I don't think uh, I don't think Blaney had anything for him. Maybe so. But it huh, just maybe so. it looked like an easy pass. That I mean, for the win. I don't. What do you want? You want? What do you want him? Run I, him into I, the like wall? Like I said, I no. That's the, the well. That's my point. It. I don't want the guy to get thrown into the wall. But I'm like. I mean, why not? It. I mean, it's Blaney's corner. He was at the apex first. Oh come on! <laughs> oh my gosh! FIA ruling <laughs> over here. Oh, that's that's a wild discussion later, huh, Sean? But. But no, I, yeah. I'm, I'm surprised. I'm surprised Brian Blaney didn't race him as hard as he did with Kyle Larson. Maybe, maybe Blaney didn't have it in the car. He, he, the driver knows. But I think even, I do believe I do believe Reddick had the fresher tires. Everybody came in for tires in that okay. last caution. Uh, so it's 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 not tire driver skill. Driver are, you skill. Sure, um, are you sure Blaney put news on? Uh, everybody came into the pits. Okay. All right. I forget if he got two, four, or hell, even none. Yeah. But, uh, mm-hmm. Tyler Reddick was, I mean, he got by Hamlin on the low side and cleared him. Yep. So, I mean, I guess it, his car was working in all, all lanes. 
right. Cool. Uh, so kind of run, run through, so, through. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, it's it's Joey Logano, Tyler Reddick are the two definitely fighting for a championship now in Phoenix. Uh, and and who's the uh, who's one of the drivers outside looking in is actually Kyle Larson, who, like I mentioned, was plus 35 going into this race. Excuse me, and now it's minus seven points out. Looking at uh, with only one chance, one chance, and and oh my gosh, if he if he doesn't make it in Martinsville, it, 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 even Chase Elliott, they're, they, they, I don't, I don't know if even the Hendrick cars can even make it. That'd be nuts. That'd be really, really nuts. Okay. Anyway. Let's uh, re- recap the finishing order here. Tyler Reddick, Ryan Blaney, Danny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, Chad Elliott, uh, Chad Elliott, Chase Elliott, William Byron, Bowman the Showman, The Dinger, Hosever, and Ryan Priest. Top 10. AJ Allmendinger's back next year full time. That'll be cool yes, to see. Is. I had to, I, that was uh, well worth it sending him to um and two more. Two more drivers could get are gonna get in and fight for a championship. Who do you like, Sean? Larson? Yeah, well I, so we, here's our uh, here's our championship leaderboard right now uh we know that reddick is locked in and we know that logano is locked in (laughs) your boy your boy yeah my boy uh our points leader christopher bell he's a points leader but he is not locked in kyle larson is in third tyler reddick four oh no tyler reddick sorry he's fourth yeah hamlin's fifth not locked in blaney not locked in and Chase Elliott not locked in. And Martinsville's the next race. Oh my god! Martinsville the next race. They did that on purpose. NASCAR. Yeah. I think it, out of this group, um, I think Larson's gonna Larson will, Larson's either gonna win and qualify. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm I my pick right away is Denny Hamlin. To win Martinsville, he's really good at Martinsville. Um, just it's it's just home track, and he's he's always been very good at the paper clip. Um, and then I'd even put, like right away. I'm thinking it's the two Gibbs cars. It's going to be Denny Hamlin and Christopher Bell are going to be the two guys getting in. I hate to do this to Larson, but I mean he has to win. So what you're he saying, Nate, is that this is a Toyota track? I think so. All right. I, well, I'm I'm going to go with Captain America, Kyle Larson. To, to yes. Win. Yeah. So. And Ryan Blaney, he, he has to he has to win. Chase him and Chase Elliott. Mate, they're, they're, essentially, they're, essentially, if you're not locked in right now, the best way to get in is to win. <laughs> Oh, you, can't, you can't be out there points racing, unfortunately. If well, at least, at, at least we can't dump someone like Austin Dillon did anymore. Nate NASCAR made that clear. Which yes, mercifully. Yeah. Re- yeah. Regardless of who comes out of this Martinsville race as the final four, if none of them win at Phoenix, no one is crowned the champion. That's how it should be. You have to win to be the champion. Yeah, there shouldn't be any... You know, to tell you the truth, though... This, <laughs> Just no playoffs, period. So, what kind of pissing Matt, cup shit is that? Oh, it's it's bad enough. It's coming sorry. down to uh, we're having playoffs in supercars next year. Yeah. All right. So this right. weekend at two o'clock. So you mark, got, mark it on your calendar. Mark it on your calendar. Two p.m. on Sunday. On Sunday. It's going to be five hundred. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Did you see what the truck race was called? <laughs> Last weekend? No, 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 no. At Martinsville, they have these no. stupid names. <laughs> Zip by now, pay later. Two hundred. Uh, 
it's wow. out of yeah. I, I I know. I know. Did you, I know. Did you look up what the company does? Uh, I was about to actually. <laughs> I I guess you zip buy now and pay later. It's yeah. It's like the go bowling. 350 at the Glen. Yeah, but at least go bowling is, you know, it, it's actual bowling into turn one. That's uh, that's true. Oh, shop uh, online. It's or it, it looks like it's a I'm shocked it's a shop store. online company. Alright, well yep, here it go. is, 2 o'clock. You can, at 2, the race is at 2, but your pre-race will be the F1 race in Brazil at noon. E Brazil. There you go. That's gonna be a nuts, right? I, I already have my. I, I think I already have my pick for Brazil. That's that's exciting. Yeah. Christian says it's gonna rain. Oh. All right. Big, big. All right. So, so that that concludes our NASCAR chat. Nate, thank you for contributing. Of course. Good to have you back there. Bring some depth to that NASCAR uh, segment. <laughs> I, I I know I, I I can't do it as good as you, Sean. But you know, I uh, Christian and I, uh, <laughs> man, we, we, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. I, I <laughs> it was. It, it's been. Chris was just like the oh, only thing God, that saved say? Christian this weekend <laughs> was the fact that there wasn't a overtime. Ah, oh, see, yeah, yeah, and and hold on, because I, I did look this up. Um, this was the only race this year to have a caution with 10 to go and then no other cautions after that. Oh, Shocking. Sean, Sean, Shocking. So, prove it. Every, every race that has had a caution with te- either 10 to go or 5 to go, whichever one comes first, or if it does at all, um, when that happens, there's usually a green-white checkered or overtime. But not gotcha. this race. Not this race. Nope. 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 All right. Well, how about that? All right. Well, we will uh, look forward to next weekend. Um, off to Mexico City in the Autodromo Romanos Rodriguez. <laughs> what a race! Romanos means, gentlemen. Romanos. Yes. Brothers. That's brothers. Right. Very good. The Rodriguez Muy brothers. Muy bien, Christian. Yes. Uh, high school Spanish. Pedro and Rodrigo. <laughs> famous famous Rodriguez brothers from the 1960s and 70s, and they were pretty badass. Anyways. <clears throat> Tragically, they both um, had untimely fates, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, I, I'm... I, <sighs> I guess this is the, you know, I, I guess the Ferrari Redemption Tour continues. That's the best way to describe it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're showing amazing pace as of late. I mean, it's just it's just terrible that the turnaround is so late in the season. Well, I, I think part of the thing is, I, I think the reason they're showing pace is they didn't touch the car. Yeah. Now, I don't think this weekend, it will be their strong suit. I'm thinking when they get back to Vegas, they'll definitely be in the. They'll they'll definitely be the fast two cars. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, because uh, Qatar is kind of like Mexico, right? Has that flat layout? Well, I'm just, I, I was just kind of looking at this race and the next one. I wasn't. I didn't want to go too far out. Yeah, I don't. I did. I don't think. I don't think. I think this weekend. Uh, I, I'm. I'm looking for possibly a Mercedes rebound, but Mercedes is in a bit of a pinch, and we'll get to that shortly. Yeah, I, I mean, I, uh, where where do we want to? start off this weekend recap do we want to uh, go through practice I, or just get through no let's we i mean i i uh well practice we had uh for, for first practice we had a bunch of uh of uh oh yes, uh, we did. what do we, 
guest the, drivers, I guess, Formula re- One reserve, drivers. Reserve drivers. Reserve drivers. Um, uh, we had drivers. Pato. Yep, Pato Award. Yeah, I was uh, going to say Pato. Came. Pato came. Uh, uh, Kimi Antonelli, once again, fine, fine, fine performance in the Mercedes. After crashing it at Monza, he runs over a piece of debris in Lewis's car this weekend. But, Sean, I want to know one important thing. See, Jesus. even Indy 500 runner-ups get F1 testing. The, yeah, but Pato, uh, if I had to put Pato against Kimi Antonelli, I'm going to tell you, I think I'm going to pick Pato. Really? Yes. I guess it depends on the track. If it's if it's no, uh, I don't know. no, just just yeah. from overall yeah. race savviness, I'm picking Pato. No, I'm picking Kimmy. That's crazy. That's crazy. What has he done? In, what has he done at? What has he done? He's done an amazing job in the rain. Are you kidding me? What? Dude, he's he's a great racer in the rain, and he's already done all these tours in the F1 circuit. Already, just in a slower car. Oh, like, oh yeah, yeah, mate. No, wow. I, I just what? what? Wow, it's it's, it's very valid, very valid, and he can uh, only get better from here. Pato is yeah. like at Correct. peak getting there. You know, he's. I'm not saying Pato's not a bad driver. I'm just saying if I had to pick between the two of them, Kimmy's my first choice because he's going to be always improving. Or crashing? No, paddles crashing. Well, he's he's two for two. He, he's, well, did you see Kimmy's what happened two, along Kimmy's, when he Kimmy's, raced Kimmy's, with Scott Dixon? Kimmy's two for two. Look, I'm just I'm just telling you. You know, my thoughts. He's contributed yes. to the woes that McLaren, Mercedes is now facing in the dollar front. Oh uh, well, I'm, Kimmy look George. at Ferrari. Look at Ferrari. They're overpaying Lewis Hamilton when he goes over there. All right. Like, uh, yeah. I, I, well, <laughs> that's fine. They should have been bringing Lewis in, but I think they should have been canning Leclerc. But, yeah, they, they picked the wrong guy. They picked the wrong yeah. guy. The, I think Carlos they did pick Sainz the wrong guy. guy. I agree with you there. I agree with you there. Lar- and I also, Sainz- I also think, I think Red Bull made a bad decision in not picking him up. I know. I just, and, and you, because you're already having these miserable races with, Sergio Perez. I mean, it's weekend after weekend after well, weekend. Well, it could it could have got any worse this weekend. <laughs> no, it's especially oh, my boy Liam <laughs> Lawson. I mean, well, come on. that that was the race, but I mean, I'm not even going to talk about like qualifying was pathetic. I know, I know. It's <clears throat> simply the only one. The only just... person that had a worse weekend was Yuki. Who? I was gonna say stake F one. Like it seems to be consistent. Well, at least they I believe their cars finished the yeah, race. And they're not damaging the car twenty four seven. They're not damaging the cars, so Well, I see zero points on the board, so I don't know. You tell yeah. me. You know. At least there's at least their mechanics aren't fixing the cars. True. Mm. Very true. And oh Very true. gosh. Uh, didn't we find out in the uh, Destructors Championship that Sergio Perez has actually outdone Logan Sargent compared to when he did it last year when he was crowned such champion? <laughs> I I don't I believe have, he is. I don't have the numbers from last year, but I'm looking at I am looking at uh, the World Destructors Championship as of Austin, so it's not updated from Mexico. Um, so I mean, I still t- they're still tabulating the damage. Yeah, I'd, I would. Expect, <laughs> yeah, I would expect Sonoda to jump up, um, most likely, because he's ranked sixth. Uh, after Austin Perez is out in front, um, with a million and a half uh, lead on Sargent. Sargent has another five hundred k over Albon, um, and then Sci- Science is in fourth. With one point seven, and, and uh, Sean Logan Sargent is done for the season, and Sergio Perez is still racing. There's still four races. Yeah. Uh, although <laughs> Botas has actually P 
Pierre Gasly has zero damage to his name. Um, and McLaren is doing the best uh, with just under a million in damages. So no, that's good. The, McLaren is really maximizing um, all of their financials into development, and they're doing it uh, without any worries of of damages or anything like that to halt any updates. So it, mm-hmm. it's that that's a really huge bonus for them. I mean, uh, Red Bull um, between Perez and Max, they're five and a half million in damages um, and Ferrari is at 2.9, so almost three. I mean, that's r- right there. McLaren has a $2 million advantage gotcha. over Ferrari uh, and even more so with Red Bull. But and, and granted, none of these numbers are official. They're all just estimates mm-hmm. on what everything costs. But, you know, it, it is a good way to just see who's roughly where they are and how much of an impact all of these um, these mistakes are, are making. So you, you can't, unfortunately, you can't be doing, you, you can't be wrecking cars week after week. I mean, that's that's why Mick Schumacher got the boot at Haas. I mean, I'm, I, I like him, but, yeah. you know, you, yeah. if you wreck the yeah. car one yeah. too many times, that, that cuts into development for that's, the car. That's why, that's why he's starting to get the boot. So, yeah. So, all right, uh, qualifying. Um, I, I, I was, I was, surpri- I was pleasantly surprised that Carlos got pole. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wasn't. I, I was expecting him to get another win this this year because of uh, Ferrari's current form. I mean, getting a one-two at Coda is, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously that track fits into their wheelhouse. You know, it's more yep. than just the drivers. It's it's at that point, it's the car. Um, so I, I, uh, given that I would, I would even say, is Ferrari thinking about a Charles Leclerc driver's championship? Probably not. But at this point it's, you know, now you're trophy hunting, right? I think, I think they're looking at the manufacturer's championship. Yeah. They, well, they could. And if they do that, that's, isn't that like one of the bigger comebacks? Yeah. In F1? Yeah. I mean, for, that's- I, I guess I'm not sure what the numbers are for for that. Plus, the the points are all distorted too, so I I don't really know how much teams have been mm-hmm. moving up and down. But I I did see. I mean, with the with all these multi Grand Prix winners for this year alone. Um, yep. I think it's since eighty one or eighty three that it's matched the number of drivers or exceeded the number of drivers. Um, of multiple multiple winners and multiple multiple I'm sorry multiple drivers with multiple wins in the same season um so it it's definitely more exciting than some of the previous seasons but you just don't see the constant flip-flopping for the for first place in yeah, the, in the drivers, because um, every I mean, if Max didn't have the start to the season that he did, uh, and it and the field looked take t- take it for what it is now and put it back then, yeah, the season would be kind of wide open, but it would probably be more of a Ferrari and McLaren outright battle rather than a Red Bull one um, or, yes, yeah. or Max. But I mean, it's. It is interesting to watch, and just the fact that there's a possibility that Lando can win does make the season all that more enticing to watch because you just you you don't know. I mean, Max could have a a bad weekend at any point, and there's not much really he's he can do. And um, as the yeah, I again the the onus I think overall though is on McLaren not having the bad weekend because let's let's put it this way. Lando goes out in one race, it's over. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. All right. So it's not, if Max goes out, it's not over. Right. 
But it is amazing to me that you have to look back to Spain, June, the end of June yeah. is when Max won his last race. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you alluded to earlier, Nate, uh, the, it, there does seem to be rain in the forecast. That you said that there was going to be rain in the forecast this weekend, so might might be interesting and another opportunity for Max to sneak a win. Well, there. if there's rain in the forecast, vamos, Team Haas. <laughs> oh yes, that's right. <laughs> hey, there's a pole winner over here in Haas. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, as, if it rains all track. weekend, if it rains all weekend, it could be a race winner in Team Haas too. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Be all for it. <laughs> it. Can you imagine Nico Hulkenberg getting his first podium with a Haas? Oh. Oh, can you imagine a Haas one too. Ah. Uh, <laughs> wow. Wow, what a Ferrari one too there. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, another Ferrari, one Ferrari one. one. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's a Ferrari engine. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm not. I, I don't think it's. I don't think the engine's the problem. I just don't think the car. I don't think the Ferrari car is is an Interlagos car. But we shall I, see. But I'll I'll kind of you know rebuttal that because look at where Haas was. I know I'm kind of skipping ahead, but look where they were at Coda and and soon to be when we talk about the race in Mexico. They're kind of you know skewed up as well. We should probably talk about the race in Mexico rather than just jumping forward. To yeah, no, I know. Because um, <laughs> we can we can get to Interlagos so, after we. Uh, in the immortal words of "lights out, lights out, and away we go," uh, Max uh, took the lead. Uh, yeah. On the start. And what did Yuki do? Uh, Yuki got uh, <laughs> well. Does it? Got some air time. Y- Yuki Yuki threw caution to the wind, and he. I, <laughs> yeah. I I don't know about sending it up the outside there. I really uh, don't. Me neither. Because where like, else if you're are you going to go? The grass. If, you go. If to you're the in grass. the front, if you're in the front two rows or three rows, I get going to the outside. But when you're back where he was, which was you know row six or whatever, row five, row six, that's that's just not going to happen because everyone is starting to funnel there. You know. Right, and it, and it, and it, did, it all it did was one guy had to move over, and you know, bang, he clipped, uh, clipped yeah, Yuki, Alba. and yeah, and Yuki went for a ride. Well, and Albon really couldn't have done anything because he had a car in his, his inside pushing him out. Right, that's and, well, he was and, kind of hoping that there was no one on the outside, you know. And I mean, Yuki did it to himself, if you're asking me. That from what I yeah. saw, yeah, I thought it was it, an unnecessary risk. Especially where well, the car it was, just it was high been, risk, no reward. Especially, especially where the car had been rebuilt over the weekend, and especially so like trying to sell himself to get a Red Bull ride. Yeah, it doesn't help. Doesn't help. Doesn't help. And and Honda could do all they want to try to get Yugi. I, I mean, me, I th- I think Liam Lawson's sold, sold on the seat. I, I it, a one-year contract for Yugi, maybe if worst case scenario, but I'm thinking Liam Lawson has already is got he, this. Is Yugi um, re-up for next year? I mean, at least until Honda goes to Aston Martin in 2026, that'd be my bet. Yeah, I, I believe he's he has okay. a contract. Okay, he, he's year. up for next year. Okay, all right. Um, so you know now we go and uh, we end up with a safety car. Uh, Max leads through the safety car. Uh, defends for two laps as the safety car is called in, and, and has has it has a really good restart. Yeah, uh, to get away. Good but restart the, was able to Carlos defend, defend defended for two laps, and then Carlos turned the wick up. Yeah, he he was able. He, he had an amazing run. I think it was the second lap on the straightaway. Yeah, the main straight, and was able to really catch up to. Uh, uh, Max Verstappen and didn't make the pass or anything, but I was more amazed of how much ground he made up on that one straight. Right. I think they're going to be uh, come Vegas. Th- I think it's going to be another Ferrari one too. Now that I think about it, because th- there's three long straightaways. Well, that's that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying Vegas is more of a track than into Lago. Right. Right. 
And then Carlos Sainz takes the lead. And then controversy. Controversy in F one? No. <laughs> but I'll tell you, it was an amazing pass for the lead. Carlos Sainz really threw it in there to make it happen. And in doing so, backed himself and Max up to uh, Lando Norris and Charles Leclerc. Right. But then, the controversy. <laughs> which one? There was two. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. That's what we're trying to get to is the controversy, Nate. Yes, yes, yes. So, okay. Lando tries it on the outside. But Max gives him, he just threw him off the track. There was no gap, no nothing the first t- time. Where it's a normal passing zone. Um, and then two corners later, Max really doesn't do himself any favors in the uh, S's. And throws both of them off the track. Yeah. All right, so my take on this is uh, the first incident... Uh, was very much like Austin. Um, he had him at the apex, drove him out, uh, and and that. Now I will at this point after this, I hundred percent agree. I this was uh, poor driving on Max's part, and and well on worth both? the penalty. No, on Max's. On Max's. He, he should, he, you know, he, I think he, I, un, I understand he doesn't want to give up the spot, but, um, you know, what, I think he, he needs to understand. Well, what he needs to understand is the car's not that competitive, so minimize the damage. It's, you know, if they're going to get by it, they're going to get by it. He could have settled for fourth and been fine. Uh, you say that, um, <laughs> but actually, if, if you want to talk about damage limitation, the way he did it was actually the more efficient. Oh, I know. Um, I, I agree. So I agree. He did he did kind of just he did prevent Lando going for the win. So yeah, just to kind of recap that. So yeah. if the the two the two scenarios I'm looking at is is one, you have the, the way you finished, right? Which is fine. Right. Yep. Um and uh with Lando finishing second and Max finishing sixth after the penalties, um, yep. it was a ten point loss. Uh, right. That Max Max took away from that. If we play out the scenario where Lando or, or Max doesn't make that second move, all right, um, and Max finishes fourth, and Lando does end mm-hmm. up winning because you, he he definitely Lando definitely had the pace to to win. Um, <laughs> and doesn't win because Sorry. Max backed him up <laughs> at the start. At yeah. the start of the race. With with how long Lando was behind Verstappen, I, if he if he got ahead, I don't think he or, or I I think he would have caught signs at some point. I th- signs probably would have managed the race a bit differently, but I that McLaren is fast. Um so that there's no doubt about that. Anyways, mm-hmm. if so if if Lando did end up winning the race and Max finished fourth, the points win would have been thirteen points. So if if Max's idea is just to not let Lando win, then you know it's it's working out. So from from that standpoint, he did it. Yes, if you know, say the Ferraris played the strategy a little bit differently and um, like Leclerc could have been used as the as the dummy to um, park the bus and back Lando up mm-hmm. more to give the gap to signs. Then yeah, he finishes second. So then the, um, then the points gap would, would be six. So, but I mean, you're at that point, you it's, it's all a risk game and which one do you take? So, I mean, I, I guess Max settled for s- splitting the difference in that sake. Um, but uh, it, yeah, I, so from a, Damage limitation standpoint, whether whether you let Lando win or you have him not win, right. he it seems like the not winning option is better for Max at the at this point. I don't I don't defend 
the move that he did because it was clearly desperate. I think I think the what I call into question is um, the consistency of the stewards because for, for sure, for sure. Because what is it after Coda, right? Well, so I I did read the ruling from Coda of what they put out and then versus what they put out for this. So in Coda, they the the rules said that a standard 10 second penalty is what is is what is given for any of that stuff but they thought that and they put this in that that re, the penalty release statement of that 5 seconds for George and Lando during Austin was deemed sufficient so mm-hmm. with how it played out there but with um rather rather than the whole 10 second penalty whereas in brazil they i'm sorry not brazil in mexico uh they give max two 10 seconds penalties um so i guess my if if you're going to use precedent or set set precedent for any of the rules that you have in the book I, you you kind of have to go back and look at Max and Lewis during 21 mm-hmm. and the the race that comes to mind is Brazil during that season where Max absolutely runs Lewis off the track granted Lewis ended up winning the race um, but Max I don't believe was assigned a penalty for that stuff so yeah I know it's it's 21 versus 24 but again if if the rules aren't addressing the loopholes that Max is trying to exploit. Uh, you you got to be consistent on how you, how you rule this stuff. Um, right. So I, that's, I, I don't have a problem with how Max is driving because the stewarding has led to him thinking he can do it all. Which is fine. I, he's he's playing the rule book to a T. Um, I I don't have a problem with that. I I, mm-hmm. I don't I don't agree with this general note. I mean, with all this aside, I don't agree with the general driving of how everyone in F one does it because I think just driving your opponent off the track is ridiculous in the first place. Um, just because you know you ha- you're at the apex first, I I don't agree with that. I think you can have plenty of good racing when you when you give a fair amount of space or run, run each other hard to, you know, the, the edges of the track. But I mean, it's, that's just not how they do it in F1. So that's, that, that's their own. Uh, yeah. I mean, F1 overall made the, made this bed and they got to lie in it. Right. Um, you know, Max, Max read the rule. Max knows the rules. He's doing it. Um, I, 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 but the, the the apex stuff, he's pushing that to the, you know, right to the limit. I do agree with Nate. I, on the second side of the fence, I thought that was just that was out of bounds. That's very dangerous. Opinion. Very dangerous. Yeah, I thought that was. That's, I, thought, that will, I thought that was crap. But my whole thing is that that's fine. The first incident, like I can see that happening, but for the second one, that, that wasn't even a passing zone. Yeah. It, there was no way well, that was even going to work to hey, begin with. Nate. But now here's 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 the devil's advocate of it. One could argue that Lando was potentially letting Max by. Did he slow up? I didn't look at the throttle and brake data or anything like that. Um, but some seem to argue that Lando was maybe trying to let Max by, and Max just assumed otherwise and just took it. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably a stretch for that one, but but to your to your point of that's not a passing zone. Nate, come on! Every race car car driver knows that every corner is a passing zone. Some <laughs> I mean, some are just easier than others. I, okay? I, I you know I'm I've been called to have another inside line, but you know I just I don't see it as that as a passing zone, <laughs> and that's me saying that. But again. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, just looking at it, I just really don't see that as 
an optimum place to make an idea of an overtake. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, how I see it. All right. Christian? So the outcome, of, <laughs> so the outcome here is uh, Max gets saddled with two 10-second penalties for 20 seconds. Uh, he went on to hold off Lando for quite a bit, uh, kind of, you know, keeping him from moving forward. I, this is where I kind of don't get, this is, this is where I question McLaren. Right. What? Why didn't they just bring Lando in? Oh, I know. I know. Just get him out of it. Just get him out of it. Because if they pitted first, Max is going to have to pit. You know, I, 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 I was thinking. I think that I think you were better off pitting sooner than losing more time behind Max to Carlos, with the hope that maybe you could catch him. As it was, Lando was catching him at the end of the race. So if they had got him out of this sooner, perhaps he would have been even closer. Right. I don't know. I mean, it's that was my first call. inclination on this. Was as as he got stuck and stuck behind him. I'm like, all right, well, we're getting into the window here. They're going to go to hard tires. What's the big deal if you pit him now? Just get him out of it as soon as possible. Well, get him out of it and maybe increase the chances of getting higher up on the grid, right? Because I don't know if it would have been a win, but I mean, it would have been increasing your chances for second. Well, as it was, he got second, but right. Um, I just thought. Um, I thought, I just thought getting him out of it would have brought it, made it, made it easier for him to close in on him. So, for sure, and and I I get the argument because I was even starting to think about it as watching as I was watching the race. Um, well, I, th- I think the other thing too is, yeah, you could say that, but I, who knows what the gap would have been like as well, because um, I mean, if trying to get through traffic there and seeing how some of the lap traffic costed Leclerc a lot of times um, towards the end of the race. It, if you if you catch guys at a bad spot, you're, you're not really helping yourself. And it's kind of hard to make up time, too, because the pace that Sainz was running, I mean, yeah, Lando was running a little quicker towards the end, but even guys outside the top 10 were running um, mm-hmm. pretty much the same pace. So no one was really gaining on anyone. So mm-hmm. I, I think that's that's the other point to look at it too. I mean, it's yeah. it's always easy to say, yeah, just pit him earlier, but no one's ever looking at the gap of of where they're going to come out. That's true. Well, um, I don't know. That was just my thoughts on that whole mess. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, from that point on, I, I I really thought Carlos controlled the race nicely. Yes. Um, you know, and I you know Lando put on a spirited charge. Back through the field to um, overtake Leclerc um, for the second and demote Charles down the third. Um, you know, and then, you know, Max made a spirited run back up through the field to finish um, sixth. So, I, you know, 10 second penalty, Max probably could have finished, probably maybe split the Ferraris. I mean, sorry, split the Mercedes. Right. Yeah. You know, so. Um, uh, that that's you know it was just I ah it's just I I just thought I thought one move was fine I thought the second move was uncalled for but anyway yeah I was not a huge fan of the second move yeah. like again I could see this first move understand I I understand that move but mm-hmm. the second one was just out of my vocabulary I do I really yeah. did not understand that oh. Um, in the, in the predictions from last weekend, Christian, how did how did we do? Uh, Nate did the best. He wow, wow, wow. he wow. he uh, he did not get anyone in the correct order, but he guessed the entire podium. Um, Boom! So he, he he was off. Uh, he he had Lando first, Leclerc second, and Sainz third. So I mean, just rearrange it a little bit, and you're you're right there. Um, Dad, you got uh, two. You got the two Ferraris, and then I got uh, two the two Ferraris as well. But I got Leclerc in the in the right spot. Mm-hmm. That was that was really the only uh, difference there. 
All right. Um, all right. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the point standings. We can find them. I am checking. Max is leading. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Max Max has a 57 point 47? 47. 47. 47. 47. 47 point lead. Um Shal is third with 291. He is 24 behind Lando. Uh, Oscar is 40 behind Charles. Carlos is coming like a freight train. He's just nine, uh, 11 behind um, Oscar. And then there's a, just a massive drop off to Lewis and George. I'm even going to add this. I, 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 Christian, you're a numbers guy. You'll like this. Carlos Sainz is officially eliminated from driver's championship contention. Dude, give me a break. Despite... I cannot stand that. <laughs> was it motorsport.com that closed yeah, this? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I see that. And I'm just like, oh, Christian's must be like losing his mind seeing this. Dude, it, it's like, yeah, we get it. But you you started doing it now and you didn't do it for like any of the other drivers before. Yeah, like, ooh, like... <laughs> I mean, they they did it for the Mercedes drivers, I think, the last week. But I mean, they like you're not even you didn't do it for any of the Sauber guys or Aston Martin drivers. So no, no one else in the in the bottom half of the standings. So give me a break. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I mean, I, uh, no, 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 no. More, more interesting on the points people... front is yes, McLaren is still leading in the constructors' championship, but Ferrari takes over second place in the constructors. They leap, which is big. Yeah, they leap Red Bull. It's it's entirely possible for Ferrari to take the lead realistically mm -hmm. at the end of the season. Yeah. Realistically, I would say strongly. They that. are uh, twenty nine points. Yeah, very doable. And between two good drivers, very doable. Yeah. Very doable. Yep. This is what happens when you have two good drivers. Yeah, well, you know what you know what's happening next year? Getting rid of one of them. Uh, oh, at Ferrari? Yep. I was I was talking Red Bull, who should be canning oh. uh Perez to you know, today, but they, they, they didn't do that. See, and that's the funny thing, right? It, normally they would ask Pierre Gasly, Alex Albon. The fact that they haven't done their tradition of axing a driver earlier mid-season especially Sergio Perez I mean come on come on come on Ferrari I mean not uh, Ferrari <laughs> Red, Red Bull. Bull Red Bull come on wow man it's been that yeah, long yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I know <laughs> the, the, the other red-ish car right so uh, apparently I'm colorblind too but <laughs> But mm. no, th I mean that's just it, right? I, I don't know. I I can't believe um, uh, Red Bull haven't sacked uh, Sergio Perez yet. I mean, at least put. I mean, I want to say Leah Lawson, but someone might be saying, "Hey, put Yuki Yuki in a few ra uh, races and you know see what happens." Right? I mean, at this point now, you're trying to save your constructive championship, right? Like, I mean, you got two championships to worry about, right? Like, I, mean, mm -hmm. I, I mean, the other thing too is like, wh whether they're trying to save it or they're just, you know, throwing in the towel, like it, Mercedes is not passing them. So it, no, at that point, no, 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 at no. this point, what do you have to lose? That, well, that's my point. Like at this point, it's, you, you know, try the Hail Mary and, and I mean, for the commanders, it works, but <laughs> Maybe, you know, for Red Bull, it could work. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, All right. Picks for, um, picks for next week or, or quick news? Uh, let's, just, uh, let's just talk quickly on the Mazda race at Martinsville, Christian. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, I great race. Uh, 105 laps around Martinsville. Um uh, first place got 15 grand and a grandfather clock, which, um, oh, where'd it go? Did they get a full scale? Yes. Yes, they did. Clock. Oh, yep. uh, yes. Man. 
That's awesome. Yep. And it was yep. it the doesn't. number 96 any, of Chase. Any pro series that runs there, that they get one. Yep, of uh, Jared Thomas that, that won Jared the race. Jared Thomas, yeah. And I'm sorry, he took home 25 grand. My bad. 25. Uh, plus the clock. Plus the clock. Um, ex- That's a good day. This this was an exhibition yeah, race, not part of the points. I am uh, I'm totally fine. No, I I think this is fine as an exhibition race. Mm-hmm. I think you could get a. Good, I think so too. First crowd. time through. Yeah, especially first time through. I mean, even even second or third time, I think this would be fine as I mean, as like was an only, end of season kind of thing. There was only eighteen cars too. Yeah. So I mean, that you and I were talking earlier. I mean it. There wasn't much racing going on for most of it um, because I, I think the field got spread out pretty quickly. And with only yeah. 18 MX-5s out there, it, Cars, yeah. it it's not like having they, – they don't take up a lot of space either. So it, it looks – a lot more spread out than it probably is. I, um, I think. I think when it gets a, you know, they come back and I got more guys there. It'll yes. be, it'll be good. Yeah. Um, now, I, you know, the the MX fives do run at Daytona on the road course to open the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, they put on a great race there. I will say this: if I had to watch the MX fives on a two and a half mile super speedway, uh, it's no, I, I, I don't. No, 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 it's no, not going to. No, that's different. That's different. yeah. I, I mean, on the road any, course and the bankings and stuff, it's it's just the right amount. Any any of your mile and a half tracks, I think, would be. I'm sorry, not mile and a half. Mile. Yeah, tracks. no, mile and a half would be about the biggest you want to go with these things. No, I I wouldn't I wouldn't do a mile and a half. I would just do a like mile. mile, like New Hampshire I, or something. Mile. Yeah, I, I think a mile like New Hampshire is is perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, I mean, what what's? I thought Martinsville was perfectly fine for this. What's? Oh, so, it, it was awesome. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Uh, I, don't. You I, so, it right. it, it's, I mean, it, it, it's, work. it's it's not. Um, I I I'm not a fan of it as a as the NASCAR finale. I mean, I don't mind it as an oval, but I think with a with a smaller car like the Miata, it it could work better. Um, it could. Uh, it, it could, used it could, to go there, and I think could race better, yeah. race better. Gate, Gateway could be another good track. I mean, I'm just thinking of tracks that are a mile and smaller. I, I Sean, just, Sean, I just, Darlington. Darlington with the MX-5s. Darlington? That might not be bad. That might, not, that might be pretty interesting. Um, yeah, right. Anyways, the, the there were a few cautions. That would actually be, that would actually be interesting. There, there, <laughs> there would be a few... Um, actually, Nate, I think we're just spitballing ideas for NRL right now. Um, oh, I know. It's, it sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last 15 laps, there were a few cautions uh, involved, but the, the racing on the restarts was great. And I mean, it was pretty much the whole way up. No one was really trying to door too many guys. It seemed like everyone was just trying to make it to the finish. And plus, it's oh, an, there it was, was an bumpers. exhibition. It was they an were exhibition. Using the yeah, they... In the final laps, they definitely were, and and you could see it. It was it was some really good <laughs> yeah. stuff. Um, so I, I had I, I had no problem with it, and and guys were like really pushing the limits of how hard you could bump one another too. <laughs> yeah, they were. So yeah, they, they were. But yeah, I was, I, I am, was that not F one Boston League? Oh, at all? Uh, it yes. was. It, yeah, it was. It, like it was. No, no, yeah. Uh, yeah, it yeah. was pro night. <laughs> yeah. That's all I could think. That's about. what. That's all I could think about when I was watching yeah. it. Yeah. Right. I was like, oh man, where have I seen this story before? No, that that but, was really good. I mean, then again, I mean, when you watch the modifieds, they're doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. And, and they're doing it all day at um at New Hampshire. I mean, that's just yeah, their but super speedway. I, it, there's one thing when it's called a bump and run. It's not when you crash into somebody. Yeah, it's not a dump and run. Yeah, it's not a dump and run. It's when you in a modified when you move somebody, it's literally you. You, you got to be good at it. Yeah. Got to hit him square. Because you don't want to hook. You don't want to hook the bars. And the guys do the same thing in the monsters yeah. because you can't really. You don't want to risk damaging the front end on those. Things. Yeah. No, because you. Yeah. Yeah. You need that front end. To... Yeah. So. Anyways, all right. All right. So look forward to that for next season. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. I, I say. I say. I say more sports cars on ovals. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I might just start a petition. 
No, I, I like I. It has to be the right place. I mean, and secondly, like Mazda MX-5 Cup racing at Lime Rock is fantastic. Yeah. Okay. It is. It is. Or any single make racing series at Lime Rock is fantastic. Porsche Super Cup. Any spec. Mustang race Challenge. Cup. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think the Craftman Truck Race there is going to be insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to have an Arca yeah. race there. Yeah. Arca, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that that's like K&N, that's they, like K N, but the uh, truck race is going to be fantastic. They they they're just missing the. Are they use it? that schedule? Are they going to use the uphill? I would assume so. They have to. Because oh, oh can, now you, oh. now you're faced with a dilemma, right? Do you use the chicane, which would no, be terrible? No, no, be because terrible. you just chew. They'll you chew the brakes up on that thing. Yeah, they'll chew the brakes up on that thing. No, but someone gets turned and then knocks into three others, like in the chicane. In the chicane, yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's what, no, that's, yeah, no, no, no. you get. You got to use the uphill. Yeah, yeah, you got to use the uphill. Got to use it. That's what I got to use it. I, mean, I, I think it's gonna I be think, fantastic. I think they will. I mean, it's it, Trans Am uses the old, the old uphill. So I mean, yeah, Trans Am does. You could probably the, the yeah, TA no two cars, yeah. TA one and TA two, the TA one and TA two cars use it, and those things are those things are probably faster than the trucks. Yeah. Uh, true. Yeah, so I know. I, I wish. Uh, I mean, I wish it was not. I wish it was the modifieds. I yeah. really do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, 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 they put on such a good show the last time they went. I mean, the Arca guys will put on a good show, but I just wish it was the modifieds instead of the Arca cars. But <laughs> yeah, I already, I already have my pick for that. If Karna Zilich is in it, he won. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I think Boris. I think Boris is coming back. Oh, uh, Boris will be all over that one, right? Come on. Yeah, he'll probably show up in a in the Arca race in a Hendrick car. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just mops the floor. Um, just a Grand Slam yeah. weekend, practice, qualifying, right. race. So, looking ahead this weekend, uh, we got uh, Formula One in Brazil, NASCAR at the Paperclip. And we have WEC season finale in Bahrain. Yes. How do you say it one more time, Sean? Bahrain. Bahrain? Yeah, 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 yeah. Bahrain. That one. <laughs> yeah, that place. Yeah. You know, you know, one of their, uh, I think their half dollar has a uh, has a picture of the uh, Bahrain circuit or uh, oh. tower on it. Fun fact. Nice. Neat. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, let's just do some quick news and notes. Um, I think the uh, hold on. I just oh no, I didn't. Uh, I did no, I didn't. Hold on. WC WEC news for next year. They're ditching the color code of orange for the GT cars and going back oh, to the green. Okay, that's cool. That's good. Uh, we have orange. a f- wait, 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 wait. I got this. I, are you orange? You glad that's the case? Oh, boom. Guess what? I just bleeped that, so no one's gonna Boom. hear it. Oh, um, dang it! No. <laughs> and the the other thing that I saw with that news is they're switching the leader boards to have a bit more LEDs on them to do some other information as well. Okay. So, yeah, like pit time, right? Or like yeah. pit stop clock. Yeah, I hmm. I thought they did that already. But I guess no. it's like no, 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 no. I'm sorry. They they don't. Up. They um currently right now all they have is the th- the three dots on the side of the car to show <laughs> whether you're on the podium yeah. or not. Um, no. So the so this will be like the first uh, position board on there, and yeah, time yeah. the pit time too. So um, just on the WEC front, uh, after the weekend race, we have the rookie test, and uh, one Valentino Rossi will be testing the BMW GTP yes. car. Yes, yes, that's exciting. We like to hear it. Very. Um, on the NXT IndyCar front, uh, Sophia Flourish will be coming over for a test. Oh, very cool. Oh, that's cool. With HMD, so that'll be exciting. She's fast. Um, Jamie She's Chadwick fast. is testing a Formula E car this weekend and is in hot pursuit of either one-off rides in IndyCar or a full season. All right. That'd be, probably, that'd be awesome. That would probably be with Dale Coyne racing. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the IMSA front, um, 
just first of our one-off entries for the Daytona 24 Hours has been announced, and that's the Barton Brothers Racing Mercedes with Get Speed. They've been racing in Europe in the Fanatec series over there. Mm-hmm. Um, and Anthony Barton's a uh, um, American. He's been racing over there in that series. Uh, he's pretty quick as a, as I guess, as a bronze driver, and has some really good uh, um, pro drivers with him. So, be exciting to see those guys over here. They do have a cool graphic though on their car. Oh, yeah. It's all black. It's all black, and it's um, it says Barton Brothers on it, but it's got the uh, skull and crossbones on it. <laughs> Friggin', it's awesome. Nice. It's one of my favorite ones. Nice. Um. Uh, let's see. That covers that. Um, I will say this on on some sad news that happened late last week. Um, Bob Riley. Oh yeah, father of. Father of Bill Riley, Bob Riley, father of the Coyote IndyCar for AJ Foyt, that AJ Foyt won the uh, Indy 500 in. Father of the Lynx Formula V car, the first car that run an IMSA race and won at Daytona back when it was the very first race in IMSA in the 1970s. Bob Riley, who built the fantastic Roush. Ford Mustangs and Capris of the IMSA, Trans- uh, IMSA GTO series and SCCA Trans Am series that were driven by Scott Pruitt, Willie T. Ribs, Greg Pickett, Wally Dallenbank Jr., John Jones, and Bruce Jenner. Now, Caitlin. Bob also built the Ford Mustang GTP car, a front engine GTP car that ran in the 1980s. And that was before he built the, the all uh, downforce car, the Chevy Intrepid. That was driven by Wayne Taylor and Tommy Kendall. Mm. Bob passed away at 93 and was recently inducted into the IMSA Hall of Fame. So, uh, condolences to the Riley family. Bob is uh, a legend and will be missed. He's a legend he of the sport. Just. Pre pre race career, he also um, he worked on the Saturn Five rocket program. <laughs> nice, <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah, that's very cool. All right, yeah, given. Yep, um, I almost made a mistake and went somewhere I shouldn't have gone there. Um, anyways, um, all right, that covers. Oh, oh, and then oh, lastly, oh, uh, uh, this got, was breaking got... breaking news right. today. Yeah. Breaking news today, uh, and, and, and this is why I wonder why um, Chevrolet or and GM like can never get their act together when they they get to like top level sports car racing. So they've um, decided that as of this weekend, it's a great time to change the leadership at the top of their WEC hypercar program and IMSA program, as well as their GT3 program. Jeez, oh, wonderful timing. Yeah, you know, like, it, I, you know, it was seamless when it was, you know, when Doug Fian was running it. It was Pratt and Miller. You know, I, now now it comes in house, and this this is what happens. You know, they put two people in charge of the program, let them run it. They're building continuity. They're making making steps for next year. And what do they do? They take these two people, and now reassign them to other places in GM. Mm. This is a peop, you know, I and, and you're moving you're moving your WEC program, you're moving both of your programs to new teams. So wouldn't you want your figure per your figurehead or you know head of the racing to be con- you know some continuity there? I mean, I guess. Just just saying. I mean, the guys at Pratt and Miller must be like, even though they're running the Corvette, the G, the GTD Pro Cars. I mean, they they must be like, uh, what's going on here? I mean, it depends on how much involvement they are with uh, communicating with them, other than other than just parts and yeah, critical information. I, I, so, anyways, I, I don't know. Just amazing, you know. Yeah. I mean, they the you you you're. 
you know what, two years into this whole hypercar thing, and now you're changing it, mm-hmm. and then you got your uh, GT3 program, really, which just kicked off this year in full, and, they, and you're changing the leadership there. I, it's just unreal. Yeah. Uh, anyways, enough of my rant. <laughs> On that. Some other news. The real winner of the Mexican Grand Prix was Sonny Hayes. Uh, hey, so when uh, you get out of your car to celebrate, um, <laughs> I know where you're going. With you, this. you always can get your helmet off with your gloves. It's much easier. <laughs> no. Oh my God! I thought you were going to say something else. No. 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 Somehow, miraculously, they'll CGI those away. I mean, call me yeah. crazy, but he grabbed the Mexican flag. You, you're um, supposed to grab the yeah. You grab the flag of the country, of from. the country you you're from. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, hey. but call me crazy, but I, that's something I noticed. Like I was like, oh, yes, sorry. no, hundred percent agree. Maybe he Sonny Hayes is a Mexican driver. Uh, Did he? Who knows? Did he? Fair point. Fair point. That's true. All right. Um, shall we move on to our picks? Yes. Yes. Let's get these in. So, for Brazil, oh, do I go first? I, I, I'll, do you want to go, go first? first? I'll go first. Okay. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna surprise Sean with this. Um, for Press starters, it. no, 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 no. Although. If he wins, he'll be the seventh driver to be a multi-race winner. But I'm picking Lewis Hamilton to win this race. Uh, Lewis Hamilton's going to win. Uh, you're going to see Lando come in second. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Oscar Piastri is going to finish third. And the wild Ooh. card is going to be Nico Hulkenberg. The Hulk. The Hulk, that's right. So the Hulk. My picks. Okay. My picks... I am going to go with Oscar for the win. I'm going to go Max for second. And I'm going to go Lewis for the podium. All right. And my dark horse will be K-Mag. All right. Nice. I am going for Lando to win. Max in second. And... Leclerc in third. And my dark horse uh, will go Alonzo. Oh, yeah, I know. It's, it's they, something they, to retire. They need to pick me up because they are just dropping off the charts right now. <laughs> what are they doing, man? So. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. All right. And on that note, good night. Thank you guys for listening to the Red Mist Podcast, hosted by Christian Abbott, Sean Abbott, and Nathan Lavin. It's produced by Christian Abbott, and music is by Alex Wart and Harrison Tate. <laughs>